In this blooming orchid update, I have decided to show a bunch of short vignettes for each flower instead of a long, continuous ramble through my collection. I always seem to miss blooming orchids, as well as not include the orchids blooming inside my house. In continued crazy, nobly dendrobium blooming during the summer, this is dendrobium fairy moon sweetie. And it's even suffered some um, sunburn damage. So what happens is that the orchids that I have in this area um, get reflected light off the windows uh, in the late afternoon and it has a tendency to burn the leaves. So this is this is basically reflected sunlight, you know, high beaming my leaves, um, just like when you kids use a magnifying glass and burn ants. Okay, I have grasshoppers or slugs or something. Um, so this is my Potanara Hoku gem. And you can see that its flowers have been eaten off sort of in a round. So like, here's a bud that hasn't quite opened yet. And you can see it's just the front end right here has been completely eaten off. So um, the blooming on this will not be very nice because um, the flowers have been consumed by something. I don't know what it is. All right, this right here is uh, Myrmacatavola tiger lily. It is um, Brasio Catalea Richard Mueller by um, Myrmacophilia tibensis. Um, I think it used to be Maclemoria, but now it's Myrmacatavola. And this is my first blooming of this plant. Um, I got it two years ago from Little Brook Orchids. All right, this right here is BPL. I don't know what that's short for. So that's right here, um, 50th anniversary, uh, which is blurry, we can't see it. Um, it's from Carter and Holmes. Um, and it's another Richard Mueller cross. And this is also my first blooming. And I believe I also got this two years ago. My second division of um, Brassiolalea Petite Stars, or maybe it's Brassiocatlea Petite Stars is still blooming. So I think this is the division that I kept for myself um, when I divided up my big plant only discover that when I had divided my big plant, oh, say, um, eight years ago, I had already made a second division. So currently I have two of them in my collection. All right, the Richard Mueller that I was trying to sell that's in the little cup is currently in bloom. And actually, I believe I'm gonna be sending this to Susan. Um, she said she would take it. Everyone else expressed interest, but then nobody else actually wanted it. Um, and it's got a little, like, wasp or something on the flower. A little, little wasp. But um, I'm waiting until it's done blooming before I send it to her. Uh, this is Potanara stippled sunset um, after it has been in bloom for about, I want to say, maybe a week and a half. And it's become much more... Um, yellow and the spots have become a much deeper red. My Hawiara lava burst is now almost fully open with its four spikes and actually five spikes. So this little one right here, which is not quite done yet. Well, I guess it's four spikes. It's a secondary spike off the base right here. But this is the one that, the spike that opened first, and you can see the flowers here almost done, and it has lost a couple flowers already. And just to show off the color change on my Vanda Stylus um, Loose Sneery by Prelore, you can see at the top here that it still has a little bit of the pink on the flower right there. And then the rest of the spike has become this white with 
the yellow stem on it. Um, this is a Vanda Renanthera cross. Um, I'm not quite sure how to say the cross name that they given it, but it's um, Cultivar Sunrise. And it was really, really deep red when it first opened up and it's now faded to this more orange color. I moved my Brassia Veracosa to the table so that I could enjoy it with my other um, yellow blooming orchids. So you can see I have a real sort of yellow thing going on right now at this time of year. But I do love the spidery shape of Veracosa. And this is my first blooming of Veracosa. I think I showed it when just it was starting to open up um, in my last blooming update. This is Potanara El Dorado Sunset. It's from Gold Country Orchids. Uh, and this is actually a replacement. Um, the first one I had uh, died. Um, and I had originally tried this in uh, semi-hydro and it didn't do very well. So I have now mounted it. And it of course is doing better because I guess whatever dosa that's in its background really likes being mounted. So hidden right here is my Selogeny Confusa. I mean, you can see the leaves are just almost completely hiding that flower. But right here, there's a bloom. It's a very sneaky bloomer since it's got green flowers that hide in green leaves. So here, slightly, I don't know, the flowers are slightly injured, either eaten or some such, um, is my crazy Jonathan's Glory Dark Joy doing its um, small summer blooming that it likes to do. I don't know why some of the dendrobiums are blooming in the summer. I mean, they're not. it's not as good as when they have a winter bloom. There's a lot more flowers when they bloom in the winter, but they are definitely blooming right now. All right, this little guy was in my tank wasn't doing very well and I brought it outside and um, I feel like it needs more water. Um, it blooms in the summer. It is a primary hybrid. It's um, a Phanochylum by Dendrobium cuthbertsonii um, and I recently found out that this is actually now Gaetan Minette. So it's got some buds. I have a few orchids inside that are in bloom. Um, this Phalaenopsis right here has been in bloom, I think since July, June, end of June. Uh, it is, if I can get the tag out, uh, Happy Dancer. And it's part of my work orchids that I brought home since we are on limited operations at work. And so we don't have people in the office every day and we're all working remotely. And then next to it, I brought inside my um, BL Dan O'Connor. And then right here, I have the other um, Phalaenopsis that I have in bloom upstairs, which is a Phalaenopsis Ox Lottery by Phalaenopsis Ox Golden Star. And this one has an interesting story in that I got it from Hauserman's. It was supposed to be a Piketty edged um, Phalaenopsis. And then it bloomed and it came out with these stripes. And so I actually went back to Hauserman's and I got one that was in bloom that had the Piketty edge. So I have this cross twice. One has a Piketty, and one does not. Inside in the kitchen, um, I've got my Miltasia 
Dark Star Darth Vader in bloom. Um, it had, I think, four or five other spikes earlier in the summer, but I've cut them off already because they're done. And then I have here a Phalaenopsis, a Pyloric Phalaenopsis next to it. Um, this is, if we can get it in focus, um, which is not doing right now. Here, it is um, Ming Xing Candice. See how pyloric it is. And then I have um, the Epi Green Hornet that I'm keeping in here. Uh, the only problem with the Epi uh, is that it seems to be kind of unhappy with the indoors because the ends of my growths are turning brown. So I think it's going to have to go back outside. But I thought I'd try it indoors. Most of the rest of my Phalaenopsis have been moved into the sunroom. Um, because my uh, living room doesn't have enough light. Um, except this right here, which is not a Phalaenopsis. So this is Catalea. Let's see if I can get it out. Hauserman's Sultan Summer Spectacular. And the reason it's in here is that it has spent the last few days um, maturing and waiting for the buds to open. Uh, Summer Salt and Spectacular uh, smells like cloves and it is the most favorite thing of Japanese beetles in my yard and literally um, they've started attacking it even before the flowers fully open but I have never had it open um, outside without basically being eaten within the first 15 minutes. I don't know they must definitely find it by scent and they just go crazy all over it and they consume it like locusts. So this year, since um, I caught the buds early enough, I brought it inside to keep them away from it. It hasn't, it's not fragrant right now, but um, I'm hoping once the sun hits it, it will be fragrant. Those are all the updates that I have for this Blooming Orchid update, and I hoped you enjoyed this format.